Hello, my name's Aaron Espindola. And I'm Linda OJ. And welcome to another episode of the Next Gen Business Podcast. Let's go. The Next Gen Business Podcast is produced by the Small Business Community Network. Visit them online at www.sbcncanada.org. So, Linda, uh, how's your day been today? My day has been amazing. I went for a walk in the sunshine. I had about five or six Zoom calls. I watched the news. I had lunch with my lovely husband. And I'm in one of those really happy, happy moods. Mm, yeah, so um, I guess it, it, today was a really nice day to go out for a walk. It's been a, it's been a while since we had some good weather. So it's, it's nice. To, uh, did you go to any good trails or...? No, no, no. I literally stay close to home because we only have literally about half hour lunch together because we're both so busy. Um, and in fact, today, Dave, this sounds boring now, but we've got grass people, <laughs> not you, Aaron, but different grass people looking after our lawn and they put seeds down and it didn't rain. So Dave had to hose all the lawns, which it's a bit of annoying. So we had a really quick lunch today. Oh, yeah, the, the overseeding stuff. Well, um, I didn't actually... I went out, out to the trail today. Uh, I don't know if anyone knows or our viewers know um, the Guelph Arboretum. It's a really nice trail. Great place to go have a picnic. So if you are thinking about doing that, there are people there. So if there are audience, go check that out. But um, today we actually have, uh, we're joined by a special guest. Uh, he started his own business called The Verge Electric Inc. Um, he's a master electrician and went to school in St. James Catholic High School. Uh, go Lions. <laughs> Uh, he's going to talk to us about uh, owning uh, your own business while attending school. So without any further ado, I'd like to welcome uh, Nathan Parson to our podcast. Thank you for being on our podcast, Nathan. Oh, thank you, Aaron. Um, so yeah, uh, it, it's actually, it's a verb electric. Uh, uh, and uh, so yeah, I did attend uh, St. James High School uh, in Guelph. Uh, graduated in two, so it's quite a while ago now. Um, so yeah, uh, I own and operate Verb Electric with, uh, my wife, Holly, um, we're a residential service contractor, uh, serving Tri-City, serving the area. Uh, we do venture into Guelph once in a while when, when we get called to, um, and well, I, like I said, so I, uh, the company, uh, is, uh, just coming up on six years old now. Um, so I got into the trade when I was in high school, the company, uh, didn't actually start until uh, quite a few years later. Um, so that's, uh, but yeah, I guess, yeah, we started the company in 2015. Um, but I did get into the trade in 02, uh, while I was still in high school. So that was, uh, the Oh yeah. Program, uh, Ontario Youth Apprenticeship Program. So okay. if, um, any of our students who are still attending a uh, university or college or high school are thinking to themselves, you know, I'd like to get into the trades, especially as electrician, being as we've got one here. Um, would they have to start at school as well, or is that just something you decided to do? So again, it's not that I. So um, what it was was I actually started my apprenticeship while I was still in high school, um, and the OEAP program. You actually work all day, uh, like eight hours a day, uh, on the tools, and you actually earn four credits. Uh, high school credits uh, while uh, doing that program. Uh, and it still exists. It's still out there. Um, we, uh, I am actually involved in some training of the uh, OEAP students uh, still. Um, uh, basically through the IBEW Union Hall in Breslau. Um, I'm a certified instructor there, so I do some of the health and safety training uh, when we have our OEAP students come through the program uh, through the hall there. Um, so it's basically, so it's not, there's kind of, uh, some misconceptions, uh, around trade school. Well, sorry, I shouldn't say that. there's some misconceptions about, uh, programs, uh, that need to be taken before you start your apprenticeship. Um, there aren't technically any programs that need to be taken before. Uh, if you can find an employer, uh, that is willing to take you on as an apprentice, uh, you basically start day one boots on the ground. Um, and you have to work 9,000 hours, uh, and attend school for, it used to be 28 weeks. It's now 29. They added an extra week on the last block. Um, so 29 uh, weeks of trade school, uh, which is, uh, eight, 10 and 11 block periods, uh, and 9,000 on the tool hours. 
um, that's technically, the, the, that's your training. So there's not any, um, there are some programs out there through Conestoga College and other uh, programs that you can pay and take tr- uh, kind of a schooling program, but none of those are required or prerequisites to actually start as a premise. That's interesting. Um, is that like similar to, because I know when I was in high school, they were offering um, in, I believe it was Bishop Mac, they were doing like a building um I think it was construction or something. They were offering like a, you just work on buildings or something. Is that yeah, like so to that? probably so? So uh, high schools uh, offer both co-ops uh, programs, which are a two credit course basically. Oh yeah. Um, similar thing. You work a half day, so it's either you know basically eight a.m. to lunch or lunch to four type idea um, on the tools. Uh, there's other programs. There's like, you can take uh, co-op programs for. Uh, I think they have like. I don't know some of the other ones are off the top of my head, but most, uh, there's co-op programs for all sorts of industries, not just construction, but mm-hmm. the OYAP program is, uh, again, geared very much towards those apprenticeship, uh, programs. So whether it's construction or, um, uh, hairstyling or aesthetic, anything that is, uh, an apprenticeship style course, uh, the OYAP is, is geared towards, and that's a four, uh, credit, uh, program. Okay. And do you have to like, yeah, sorry, that is probably what it was. Uh, so whether it was framing or whatever, there was that's probably what yeah. you were kind of referring to. Yeah, that's well, that's good because you don't. Did you have to pay for that to get involved, or no, no, it's 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 through the high school. Like it's so I uh, like I said, I graduated in 02, so March first of two thousand and two, uh, I started at a electrical contracting company in Quell, and I worked forty hours a week until the end of June, uh, and I earned four credits for that. And that's, I didn't, uh, I think I technically had in class like once a month on a Friday just to basically submit some paperwork and stuff, but that's, uh, it was basically exclusively on the tools. Uh, nice. And in your industry, is it hard to get, um, like tra- like placement to get those hours? Or so it- yes, yes and no, it, it can be, mm-hmm. um, really depends. You do have to find someone that is willing to take on an apprentice. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that's better to be with a smaller contractor. Sometimes it's better to be with a bigger contractor. So it's kind of a, it's a catch 22 yeah. in that respect. But um, basically it's, it's finding someone to bring you on as a, uh, essentially a junior employee and then uh, be trained all the way up. Uh, and the apprenticeship program is, is very structured. It's you earn 40% of a journeyman's or journey person's wages in your first term, 50, 60, 70, 80. Uh, and then you get licensed and you're up to a hundred percent. So, uh, and that's all government structure. That's okay. so. That sounds good. My question is: so once you've done all that work and you'd finished your apprenticeship and everything, what made you jump into building your own business? I mean, I guess it was a bit of a risk, wasn't it? Or didn't you think about the risk at all? Yeah. Oh no, it was definitely a risk. So um, I started uh, back when I started in the industry. I started in residential, um, and. About a year and a half, two years after that, I moved into the commercial uh, industry, and that is where I spent the next 12 years, uh, was in the commercial industry. Um, all sorts of buildings. I worked in the University of Guelph, um, the Tannery, downtown Kitchener, um, a bunch of schools all over the place, uh, new builds, renovations, etc. cetera. Uh, I decided, uh, so our son was born in 2013. Um, so my wife went off on mat leave and we decided to not have her go back after a mat leave. So she was off for four <laughs> as well. And that's when we decided, um, well, she was, uh, basically what do you want to call it? Extended mat leave, whatever. Um, we decided that we we're going to start the company, um, so that I could spend more time, you know, with, with Holly and Connor and, and mm-hmm. more time stuff like that. It was, uh, kind of the goal to, to be our own boss and, and control that a little bit more. Um, so that was that was what it really came down to. But as far as so, and and a lot of people don't know this. To specifically electrical, a lot of other industries are not quite this regulated. Um, but so it's nine thousand hours, so basically five years uh, to get your license, and then you have to be licensed for three full years on the tools before you can write your masters, which is what you require to actually operate a company in Ontario, an electrical. Mm-hmm. So it actually takes eight plus years uh, from when you start before you can open up your own company. There are some small exceptions. You can hire a master electrician, et cetera. But if, if you want to be a kind of sole proprietary, 
uh, then you have to do it that way. I do not know that. <laughs> I, that's that's it, a lot like of trade. It, yeah, it, it, it's a very, uh, very regulated industry, so it gets a little heavy sometimes, yeah. How are you um, able to make the jump from uh, residential to like commercial clients? So, uh, so I, I'm actually sorry. When I when I started the company, I actually shifted back to the residential industry, and that's that's where I that's where I call kind of home now is is the residential industry, the uh, service and renovation and whatnot. Um, as far as uh, I basically just moved from one company to another, um, and it was I went from a residential company to a commercial company, and then I kind of bounced around a few different. Uh, commercial companies over the years, just different contracts and stuff like that when they were out of work. Uh, you know, I went to someone else, et cetera, but um, and it just kind of happened. It, it wasn't even necessarily planned. It was mm-hmm. it just kind of well. And, and like I said, I, I spent a long time there learning a lot of different things, meeting a lot of different people and whatnot. For your industry, I guess, is it a lot of referrals or so you have to kind of build a network of customers and just make sure that you have a good rapport or how is, how does that work to get new clients? So, so yeah, yes and no. Um, networking, um, has definitely, um, increased our, our base for sure. Um, and then the networking, uh, has led to referrals, uh, and, uh, repeat clients. And then one of the other things that we've put a lot of, um, kind of energy into, is we have a really good uh, internet and web presence. Mm-hmm. Um, we hire, uh, um, you know, a small uh, independent marketing firm, but uh, he's very powerful in what he does. So uh, he's really optimized our, our Google presence and whatnot. Um, and that's the, so we do get, uh, it's either referral, um, repeat or Google is, and usually one of the things that when somebody says, Oh, I found you on Google. Cause every time I go to a, a job and estimate, I always ask them, how'd you hear about us? And, um, whenever it's Google, uh, almost every single time it's, I found you on Google and I read your, re- your reviews. So mm-hmm. that's been one of the big things that's been a big focal point for us as well is, uh, those reviews, uh, both, uh, Facebook and, and Google and anywhere else you can get them. But yeah. You obviously love what you do. Uh, Nathan so do you think this is one of the jobs where the students may think wow I'm going to make lots of money and Nathan said he can spend more time with his family so is this something that you've got to love or you can think about from a money perspective do you think if you're just thinking about the money and having more time off you're going to have such an enjoyable time or is it something you've got to love do you think um so I mean as far as I mean that's a uh, so you don't have to love it, but I, it's definitely going to help. Um, <laughs> yeah, and this is, I, I, I wasn't sure what industry I wanted to go into. I knew I wanted to work with my hands, even at a young age. Like that was, I was always drawn to, uh, you know, tearing stuff apart, putting it back together, building stuff, whatever. So that's, I always wanted to work with my hands. Uh, essentially, I worked at a hardware store when I, when I was a teenager, and then I worked in the trade. So that's basically all I've ever done is... Uh, a hardware store and as as an electrician so um it, i kind of always had just a calling to it um myself um it's definitely if you love it it's going to be a more fulfilling career uh without a doubt um but at the end of the day uh, if you don't love it it you know it's going to come through your work because uh, there is a lot of um pride and workmanship uh it, that's all that's all uh, trade and, and all industries uh, for sure but um especially like this specifically with what I do with the service renovation in the residential uh, industry. I'm in people's homes, right? So Mm -hmm. um, there has to be a lot of uh, care and pride and whatnot while you're doing that work. And it really shows that you don't have it. So um, again, at the end of the day, it's a great career. You can make uh, good money at it without a doubt. Um, But yeah, I I definitely would say it. And I would say that for any career, basically. You love it. It's going to be a lot. It's going to be a lot. It's going to be better. That's a good answer. Um, so Erin and myself have our own businesses, obviously, um, but obviously very different to yours. So Erin, what kind of things do you think, you know, because you're still, you know, in college, you've still got college friends and everything. What kind of things do you think we've missed out asking Nathan? Because I think we've ca- actually captured most of it, haven't we? So the, the listeners can, you know, dig deep. Yeah, for sure. I think um, he was able to answer a lot of our questions that we had. Um, the only thing I think I'm thinking about is people. So I'm just putting myself 
like I'm in school and all that. Uh, so just starting it off, um, do you, like with, with your training and stuff, do they show you how to start a company or is it just kind of skill training um, on the job type of thing? So as far as your apprenticeship and the, and the 9,000 hours and the, the 29 weeks in school, that's all, ob- it's all on the job stuff. That's um, oh. like physically working your hands, whatever, whatever, um, you know, um, learning how to do different, uh, you know, pipe bending, wire pulling, uh, panel, mm-hmm. tr- all that stuff. Um, as far as the business end of things, that it would really depend on who you work for and what you do. Um, I, I've known many colleagues who've gotten into the estimating end of things where uh, you basically become a, a lead estimator for a company, in which case, yes, you'll get. So some of your on-the-job training will end up being in an office, going over blueprints and, and building the schematics and, and specs and drawings and all. Um, as far as running, owning a company, that is part of the master's license training that you can do. So once you're done your three hours, you can go write the master's test. You don't have to do any pre-training, anything like that. You don't have to do any courses, um, but it helps. Uh, there's a lot of added benefit to those courses. And they talk a lot about uh, contracts, like uh, cooling off periods, how contracts need to be written, and things like that. Um, it talks about leaning properties, uh, talks about uh, regulations like uh, the uh, Occupational Health and Safety Act and the regs, mm-hmm. uh, construction regs, which for anyone that's not familiar with the Green Book is what I'm referring to. Uh, it's a health and safety manual in Ontario. Um, so it gets a lot into that stuff when you actually take the master's course, deals with a lot of those things. Um, as far as other stuff, I mean, I've taken supervisor training before, I've taken joint health and safety committee training before, but those are all optional courses that I, uh, I've taken above and beyond. Uh, I'm a certified instructor, as I mentioned, so uh, I have a train the trainer course that I've taken before, so um, I do a lot of um, peer training and whatnot, uh, health and safety mm-hmm. stuff, so yeah, uh, and that's a side thing, I do that uh, on top of uh, working oh. on the tool. That's a, that's a good question, Aaron. I guess my, my question is basically, I think um, you have uh, your wife as your business partner, and does Holly take care of the clients? Is she, you know, the customer service person, the person who looks after kind of the, the back end of the business? Uh, so, yeah, basically she fields all the phone calls, emails, text messages, Facebook messages, all that stuff. She takes care of all the social media uh, she takes care of booking me in to see the clients for estimates and jobs, uh, scheduling inspections if they're required on the job. Um, she orders all the material, uh, all that stuff. So she's she's very heavily involved in the business. Um, I obviously the material gets delivered to or just a two man operation, so it's delivered to the house here, and then I sort the material and inventory it and get it prepped for the jobs. Um, but she's responsible for, for all the billing and all that stuff. And, and we don't really have AR because uh, I actually collect payment on site. We have a digital machine for that. So uh, that's kind of a non-issue for us. But um, she deals with paying all the vendors and dealing with all the HST and the accountants and all that stuff. So Oh, it's a lot of work. So I guess what you're saying really is you can't be the electrician and do that work and do all the accounting and all the other stuff. So you will need help in the admin area, yeah? So I, yeah, I do have a colleague, uh, he's transitioned, she, uh, I was actually on the phone with him earlier today, he was, he was picking my brain on some stuff, he does investigations on um, uh, basically fire incidences and things that happen, um, sorry. Oh, sorry about that, um, he, he has a huge background in solar, so that was actually where he started was with, was with uh, solar investigations and whatnot, <clears throat> and now he's transitioned into a lot of other uh, industries as well um and so he actually used to operate a, a contracting company uh did commercial work he it was him and one apprentice and yeah he would basically work eight to ten hours a day on the tools and then he would work four to five hours at night every night doing all of his ar ap um bidding work doing all the remittances and everything like that and um basically shortly after he met his now wife uh, he decided to close up shop and and shift his uh, priorities around a little bit. So. I think if you're married and you've got children, you've got to shift your priorities. You've got to. And you said earlier that 
you wanted obviously to work for yourself and have a good living so you could have more time with your wife and family which i think is amazing but i think karen this is really good advice isn't it for anybody who is still at college or university or who've graduated and they're thinking about the trades exactly yeah. um the only thing i would another question i quickly have is where what do you uh think of the market right now for electricians is there a big demand for them or is there a lot of people graduating recently that you saw or what would you say comes to people that are looking at potentially starting this as their career yeah i mean right now there's basically pretty much a, a reasonably steady demand for uh electricians and all trades people mm -hmm. uh, certain trades more than others, certain trades less than others. Uh, as an example, like uh, tool and die has gone way down. Um, that's like a really hyper specific industry. So it's kind of a tricky one. Um, but uh, pretty much most of the industries are, are fairly steadily uh, hiring and whatnot. Um, I mean, there's lots of guys that uh, or lots of people that are getting in and out all the time. Lots of them are retiring. Um, so yeah, it's just, I mean, it's, it's a fairly, uh, fairly steady, uh, stream of people in and whatnot uh, and out. I don't think there's a, a huge demand right now. Um, but there's enough, I, I don't think it's overly high, but it's not low either. So yeah. That's good to know. I, I definitely think it's, it's, a, I've seen you in action and, um, You've got such good um, credibility. Everybody talks so well of you, uh, Nathan. So I think it is part of loving what you do, working hard, and plus taking time for yourself and your family. Otherwise, you'll just burn out. So unfortunately, we have to leave it there. But it's been so interesting. So I'm going to thank you, Nathan, and thank Holly for setting up the appointment for us. She's absolutely amazing. And I'm going to thank you for being with us tonight. It's been wonderful. And I'm going to say goodbye from me. And it's going to be a goodbye for me. But before we say goodbye, I just want to uh, remind everyone that's listening to uh, subscribe and like our uh, YouTube channel. So that's going to be the Next Gen Business Podcast, as well as it's the same handle for our Instagram. And if you go to www.nextgenbusinesspodcast, I believe it's .com, um, make sure to check those episodes because we have them uploaded there as well. But it's going to be goodbye for me as well. And thank you, Nathan, for coming on the show today. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening. Check us out at www.nextgenbusinesspodcast.com.